So now let's uh, give some examples of executing the lambda f language and our evaluation function just to explain why the current semantics of lambda f is incorrect and why do we actually need to change it. So first I'm going to give you an example of a program that does what we expect and then I'm going to give you another example of a program that does not do what we, sh we should expect in a record program. So let's see how this works. So in our first example, what we're going to do is just give a very simple example where we have, we define a variable a and assign 20 to it. So a has the value of 20, and then we create a function b that expects a parameter and returns a. So it returns 20. So whatever per, uh, argument I pass to b, I should always get the number 20 out of it, right? Because I'm returning a and a remains unchanged. So if we actually go back here and let me comment this out. Okay, so this is the program that we want. And if I run this bracket um, lecture 21, I see the number 20. Okay, so nothing too surprising. If I run this program, it should get me 20. Perfect. So um, let's just convert this into a test so that we don't have any output. Uh, B1 should give me 20. Let's see if this still runs. Okay, this still runs, so everything is fine. So as, as one would expect, when we run this program, we would expect to have 20. So let's see how can we use the semantics that I just introduced to execute this program. So this also serves as a example or a tutorial on how you should use the semantics on your side uh, to try out some inputs and outputs. So in the first example, let's consider uh, the following two things that we have. As we know, let's recap our function. Our function has two input parameters, right? It has this e, the expression or a term, and this, because we are doing uh, a define, it's probably, it's going to be this rule, but regardless, we always have a term and an environment as inputs, and then for outputs, we're going to have two things, right? We're going to have the output environment and the output value. That's what we're going to have. So, um, Okay, so this environment here, which I'm representing as an empty list, again, recall that environments are uh, represented as a list of pairs. So the environment is empty. And the term that we're going to execute is just a define with a and 20. Okay, so I would expect the way you should think in your head to understand how to execute the lambda f semantics is you should ask yourself which rule should I run? So as we remember we can only apply a rule if all the preconditions match and in this case the precondition is implicitly the structure of the first parameter. So is this an expression? No. So it's not. You cannot apply the rule e exp. Okay so is the input a define? Yes, so we can apply this rule, right? Because it is a define. Is it a sequence? No. And as I also talked about before, as soon as you find one rule, you can apply it directly because all rules are mutually exclusive. So you could never have a situation where you have two rules being um, possible to be applicable. Okay, so we are in this case. We have a single define and we are ready to Execute it. And what this is saying, what this rule is saying is the way I execute a define, right, is uh, this is the input parameter and these are the output parameters. What do I have to do? Well, the, the, re the way you execute this is by executing, evaluating the expression E. And this is what we expect, right? We have to evaluate this expression. It could be an addition, it could be a function call. You have to execute that first. So this is what the rule is saying here. And then what do we do? Note that we are using another evaluation function, and this is the evaluation function 
of expressions, not the one of terms, because there's a single output parameter, whereas the evaluation function for terms has two uh, output parameters. Okay, so what we should do here is we're going to evaluate 20, and as we know uh, from lambda f, uh, lambda e semantics, whenever you evaluate a number, you should get the number back. So if I evaluate uh, 20, I should get 20 back. So the return value of v, v is going to be 20 here, and e is going to be 20 here. And the environment is going to be the empty environment, because that's what we started from. So what should be the output? The output is going to be what? e, which is empty. And to the empty environment, we're going to add a pair where we're going to assign a to 20, a to 20. And what is going to be the return value? The return value is going to be void, right? Because when we evaluate defines, evaluating a define should always return a void. So let's see how this shows up here. So the input are two parameters, right? Oops. As we mentioned before, the input is one parameter, the other parameter, so these two term, environment, term, and environment. Output parameters, two, environment and value, environment and value. Okay, so what is the input? Um, environment is empty, 20, and then the output as we were talking about before, because we start with an empty parameter and we assign A to 20. So you should expect that the output environment should have a pair that assigns a to 20 and the return value void exactly what we have here void so to clarify this is how we would we can represent the rule right we say what is the initial environment is empty we use the initial environment to execute 20 to evaluate 20 the result of that is 20 uh, and we use the rule e eval to compute the, that result and then what do we return? We extend the empty environment with a binding with A is assigned to 20 and return void. Okay, so now let's consider step two. Step two, recall the program that we were running. Let's just execute this step. Okay, so when we're executing this step, we know that A is assigned to 20. So let's just use an environment that assigns 20 to A, right? So A has the value of 20. This is our initial environment. It's no longer empty. What we're trying to do now is evaluate this. Okay, so how do we evaluate this? Let's go back to our rules. The question is basically, now that we know how to evaluate, um, we know how to evaluate a defined now, so the only thing we have to do is how do we evaluate the expression in question? So what is the expression? The expression is this lambda. As we recall from lambda e, whenever we evaluate a function declaration, that is a lambda, we should return a closure. And the closure should capture the current environment. So what is the current environment? The current environment is this one, right? So evaluating this lambda should return a closure that holds this environment and the lambda right so that's that what this value should be and this expression here should be this lambda so lambda and the output should be a closure and then what we do now we add a new close a new binding right the output environment we have to add v assigned to the closure right because it's the result of evaluating the lambda so let's see that here in the slide now we have the output environment we see that we now have two pairs first pair here second pair here and we note the closure right because we evaluated this lambda and we have to store the current environment which is the initial environment and again the return value is void because this is void okay so let's see in terms of rules. So we're defining, we're assigning to be lambda y dot a, and this is just a shorthand notation of a lambda. 
what we're doing is we're evaluating with an initial environment of where a is assigned to 20. And what do we do? We execute the lambda with the environment where a is assigned to 20. And what that does, because you have a function declaration here, you should return a closure. And the closure holds the function declaration as before, plus the, the current environment, the environment that was used to execute it. And then what do we return? We return void and we extend the environment with b, right? Because now we have b defined. Okay. So next step is what? Next step is we want to run uh, b of one, right? Because let's go back to our program. We are we are in this instruction. I've defined a and this, and now we have b of one, and as you no, when I'm running b of b, uh, when I'm calling b and I'm passing one, I already have a defined and b defined. So this is very clear in my environment. A is assigned to 20 and b is assigned to the closure, so the runtime value of the function declaration, which is which captured a assigned to 20. What we want to do now we have a term here. The term is a function call of b with one. So let's look at the rules again. Okay, so let's see which of the rules. Let's see which of the rules we're gonna run. The first one is: is it a sequence? No, it's just a single expression. So is it a defined? No, it can only be this rule, right? Because this rule is saying this has to be an expression, and what we have is is an expression is a function call. So how do we do that? Well, we just call a function call directly using the same uh, evaluation function that we define in lambda e. So let's see how that works. What do we need to do? And this is the interesting part. So we are evaluating, see, we're evaluating b, calling function b and passing argument one. What do we do? We use the function evaluation for expressions. What that does is it's going to use the environment that we have, this one, and we're going to evaluate left to right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to evaluate b. Secondly, we're going to evaluate 1. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the body of the function in b and replace the parameter, um, which parameter? Parameter y by 1. So first thing we do, we evaluate b, and as we know in the environment, b is assigned to le, uh, the closure, right, to this closure. So this uh, pair that is represented here corresponds to this closure. So what is the return value of that? Well, it's the closure, as one would expect. So evaluation of 1 is just 1, regardless of the environment, and finally, the evaluation of um, the body. So now what do we do? We're going to take the body of the function, which is just a, right? And we're going to pass f. What is f? f is extending the environment with the parameter y assigned to 1. So our environment f is going to be this whole thing, right? It's going to be a is assigned to 20, b is assigned to the closure, to this closure, and now y is assigned to 1. We're not going to use y, and we're not going to use b, but it doesn't matter. We still have to update the whole, um, the whole closure, right? It's still accessible. So inside the body of the function of this closure, so of this lambda, these are all the variable assignments. Okay, so what we're going to do is evaluate a. Okay, so how do we evaluate a? a is a variable. So we have to do a lookup on the environment. So which environment are we using? Well, we have to use the new environment f that we extended with the parameter a, uh, y being assigned to 1. Okay, so that's exactly this. So what is the value of a? The value of a, let's look it up, it's 20. Okay, so the value of a in the environment f is 20. So therefore, evaluating a ret returns 20. And when I call this function, I should return 
the same environment and change in the value 20. Why? Let's just recap the rules because that's exactly what we do here, right? Whenever we, we do a function call, we return the environment unchanged. So the environment unchanged is the input value, not the environment that was used to execute B, right? To execute the function. It, what we're returning is the initial environment, right? Where is it? 